Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, the love of our Lord Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My brothers and sisters, we have completed the 40 days of Lent, and now, with the whole church, we enter the sacred triduum of Holy Thursday, Good Friday, the sacred Sabbath, and Resurrection Day. We glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our salvation and our life and our resurrection. Through him, we are saved and made free. On Tuesday evening at our cathedral, the oils that will be used in the celebration of the sacraments during this year were blessed by Brian, our bishop. On this night, Holy Thursday, we receive these oils into our local church. These holy oils are a symbol and a reminder of our unity with all the faithful of our diocese and the mission of the church which we carry out together by the grace and power of Jesus. Behold the oil of catechumens. This blessed olive oil is used to sign those preparing for baptism, known as catechumens. It symbolizes the need for strength and energy in following the Christian calling. This grace and wisdom is acquired through a deeper understanding of the gospel. We praise and thank God for this oil of catechumens. Behold the sacred chrism, olive oil mixed with sweet perfume. The name refers to Christ, the anointed one. The sacred chrism, sign and source of the gift of the Holy Spirit, will be used to anoint the newly baptized, to confirm Christians in their likeness to Jesus, and encourage their witness to faith, and to preserve in their work those who are ordained. May the splendor of holiness shine on the world from every person signed with this oil. We praise and thank God for this gift of sacred chrism. Behold the oil of the sick, soothing ointment, rich gift, fruit of the earth. We pray that this oil will bring to all who are united with it healing in body and in soul, in soul and in spirit, and deliverance from every affliction and anxiety. We praise and thank God for this oil of the sick. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. Lord of reconciliation, heal our wounds and bring freedom. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You came to call us to new life, to share your grace and your peace. Christe eleison. Healer of the brokenhearted, guide us to your kingdom now. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest. 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 Glory to God in the highest.
God and on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God and on earth. Peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and honor. Peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. God, our Father, we are gathered here to share in the supper which your only Son left to his church to reveal his love. He gave it to us when he was about to die and commanded us to celebrate it as the new and eternal sacrifice. We pray that in this Eucharist we may find the fullness of love and life. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Egypt, 
has cracked out all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike, and I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the house that's been, that you live in. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you. You must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations, you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. It was before the festival of the Passover, 
And Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world. But now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper. And the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the hour that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from the table, removed his outer garment, and taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment, you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, No one who has taken a bath needs washing. They clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. That was why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord I'm sure if we think about it, there's some significant event in our personal lives or in the lives of our family, our tribe, that is just one of those things that we keep going back to. Some event that marked a turning point in our lives. Something that we just love to tell that story again and again. Thinking about it, for me, it was that moment when I was in the year three classroom. Um, I was in year 12, but it was in the year three classroom in St. Pat's uh, Primary School in Bega. And it was the Sunday afternoon of the Antioch weekend. And it was in that moment that I discovered and encountered that Jesus was not just a character written in the pages of history, but a real human being. A person that I could have a relationship with. A God who loved me and that I could love. A God that, who I could worship. A God who was able to be in relationship with me. There are these stories that, that mark us and, and shape us. For the Jewish people, it was this night of Passover. That was the story that they kept retelling. That was the moment that everything changed for them. I mean, if you think about it, when the first descendants of of Joseph went to to Egypt, everything was going well. You know, he was a a powerful man and he was able to, to sway the attention of the Pharaoh who was ruling at that time. And so when the rest of his brothers came down and all of them settled there, things went well for the first couple of generations. But over the course of the next 400 years, things began to to go much more astray. Things began to fall apart. And eventually, of course, the Hebrew people were enslaved. There was no freedom at all. It was just that situation of, of just from sunrise to sunset, laboring in the hot sun there in Egypt in order simply to, to make the bricks that are necessary for the building of the projects. So when this man Moses comes along, himself with his own troubles, himself with his own problems and his own issues, but he, in that wilderness moment, after he's fleed from one of his fellow Israelites, and goes and takes that notice of that bush 
that is burning but not being consumed. And he receives that encounter, receives that call from God to know that the God of Israel is listening. The God of Israel has not abandoned his people. The God of Israel always hears the cry of the poor. And so that story of the Exodus, that the second part of the story that we tell tonight of that moment of liberation is always part of our Easter Vigil liturgy. It's the one reading that we have to read each year, that liberation story. For the Jewish people, this marks that moment when they became a people, when they began that journey to discover how to be with God, not simply as the victims of of slavehood, but now as people liberated, people who were capable of being in relationship with God. Did they get it right? Most of the time, no. Just as our, in our lives, that we also don't get things right all of the time. But it's one of those key stories. You know, just if you're a train buff, you know, you know that in most cities around the world, there's a central station. You know, that, that place where all of the trains will go through eventually. And so these stories become like that. These moments when our lives begin to be understood and interpreted in the action of what God is doing for us. So the Last Supper also becomes for us this key moment, this moment in our lives when we understand what Jesus was all about. He's not there to to be served. He's there to serve, to give of himself. And there's something ironic about it that an action that is about cleaning and about cleansing the feet of his disciples that were not allowed this year to repeat that, that action and that symbol. It's, you know, it's, as a friend was saying, it's just so strange that after this year when we've been so fussy about cleaning everything and washing everything and making sure that oh, everything is, is above board, that this action in our liturgy that involves cleaning one another, we're told we, we're not allowed to, to do. <laughs> and a friend suggested, maybe we could wash each other's feet in hand sanitizer. <laughs> Which would be a possibility, but uh, I was like, I don't even have no idea how to, to pull that, to pull that off. But the sense of service, the sense of the God who loved us, who saw our needs, who becomes available to us, the God who continues to be present to us, calling us because He has that heart of the Father. He has that desire of calling us into that freedom. Let's indeed allow that God who has called us and has welcomed us and embraced us, allow us, allow that God to bring us to that place, to bring us to his peace, to allow us to be captivated by that moment of service, to be captured by that glory of what God is wanting to do among us.
Brothers and sisters, we are called to a life of service. Let us bring before God those who are in need. The celebration of the Eucharist will be the centre of all the Church's activity on earth. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders and governments will be straight strengthened in their resolve to serve with justice and integrity. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That families who live in poverty and sickness will be aided by those who live in comfort. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are absent from the table of the Lord will be sought out with hospitality and care. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the victorious Christ will lead this community through death to new life in these three holy days. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those who have died will share in victory of Christ over death. Hear us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, your Son ate and drank with sinners and washed the feet of his disciples. Hear our prayers and help us to follow Christ's example by serving others. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We'll be to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We'll it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Oh, oh, oh. 
You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, in whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favour on the offering of your whole church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Jesus that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Jesus and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to, to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in the new creation, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Columkill, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The 
Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us share with those around us the grace and peace. who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So, normally at this point, we kind of go in procession with the Blessed Eucharist through the church um, and ending up at the altar of repose. Um, That won't be happening, so the Blessed Sacrament will simply remain here on the altar. There's no straight conclusion to the Eucharist because it continues uh, in the liturgies of the Triduum in the the 3 p.m. solemn commemoration of the Lord's Passion tomorrow afternoon and then concludes on Saturday evening with the, the great and solemn vigil of the Lord. So we continue now with the the song preparing for the vigil. Oh, <laughs> 